Hey. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> what a great reveal. <laughs> that is worth the fabulous. wait. <laughs> that was worth the wait. You look awesome. Um, thank you everybody for bearing with our technical difficulties. You would think with the thousands of hours that we've spent on Zoom in the last two months, we could get this together. That was worth it. You look awesome. Yeah. Um, which thanks, I expected Rebecca, no less. Thanks for having me. Oh, yes. We're so excited to have you. I expected no less. Um, so to those of you who have been patiently waiting and to those of you joining, um, thank you for joining one of our remake um, Zoom chats. And, you know, remake, for any of you that are new to this or just joining, remake is a sustainable consumer advocacy organization. Um, and, you know, our goal is to make fashion a force for good. And we do that by educating consumers, helping consumers be active about, you know, learning about how to be more sustainable with their choices, how to speak to brands, how to shop ethically, um, how to know what to ask for, what to look for, and how to engage to promote the idea of sustainable fashion to others. Um, so one of the brands that has long had a remake seal of approval um, <laughs> through our very strict vetting criteria is We Are Hot As Hell. And Charlene mm -hmm. Rooster is the self-titled queen bee of the organization. <laughs> she wears a lot of hats. Um, and what is particularly special about Charlene's um, kind of new life in sustainable fashion is that she spent a lot of time in business as usual fashion, in very traditional mm -hmm. fashion, and had the ability to see this, the, the complete product life cycle, the complete supply chain, to understand the idea of a product from you know, inception to you know, being with the consumer and, and then what happened afterwards. So she was able to take a lot of that knowledge when she wanted to go forth and, and do it her own way and start a new brand. And so we're going to talk about that journey today. Um, so thank you for being here, Charlene. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> my pleasure. My name, yeah, my name is Rebecca Blake Thompson. Um, you can find both of us very active on Instagram to learn more about um, our social, our sustainable fashion activism and what we do. And the purpose of today's call um, is to talk about something that Charlene really champions um, and that we both share a mutual passion for, which is this idea of curiosity and starting somewhere on your journey in sustainability, no matter where you are. And this idea that it truly is accessible to everyone. Um, so we're going to dive into that. First, Charlene, I just want to ask, like, how has this been playing out for you as a, as a leader for your team, as a mother, as a consumer, as, you know, the brand? You know, what has this current crisis looked like for you guys? Um, I, I mean, as a leader and a mother, it's definitely been, you know, put me at the top of my game um, and I shouldn't even use the word game because it's taken game out of it completely and it's put me at the top of my soul <laughs> um, and you know there there are um, some great things happening because of that um, and I'm finding that now that we're a little bit past the the panic mode and the kind of a uncomfortable complete uncomfort mode <laughs> that I'm able to see so many bright spots in the future. Um, and I'm excited to talk about curiosity with you today. And I'm excited to talk about what has evolved in me, but it's been, it, you know, it's been what it's been on everyone in the world. It's been an emotional and, and a harrowing process. Um, but with those things come great, you know, that's, the comparison that I can make is that's what giving birth to anything is. It's, it's pain, there's pain in that gain. Um, and then there's a beautiful thing on the other side. And I feel like that's what we're going through as a, as a world right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it has definitely um, put into perspective, um, into a, a heightened perspective, the idea of start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the idea of people and planet um, and what we founded Ha on um, without all this noise happening in the world and with 
just ourselves in the Zoom world, mm -hmm. struggling to stay afloat, you, you are able to really deeply think about those things, which mm -hmm. is actually, I'm cherishing that, the mm -hmm. slow down of it. Um, so that's where I am. Excited to share with you guys. Hopefully I can inspire, pep up, keep people hanging on. And, and I really believe one of the things that's going to come out of this, I absolutely believe it, that the reason I founded HA was to break this, to move fashion from what it was to what I believe it should be for the next generations. And I believe this is going to make that happen. And I hear our voices, your voice, all of the people in the space who have been lonely pioneers out there on their own, trying to be heard are actually not only being heard, they're being broadcasted and they're being listened to. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's really exciting. <laughs> it's really cool. I mean, as as frustrating as it is for all of us to not have the option to be together physically, one thing that has been incredibly, um, you know, kind of levels the playing field and has given a lot more access is that a lot of these thought leaders and a lot of these people who are at home who might normally just be getting together in their inner circles, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one, are taking this opportunity to have their conversations live, you know, via social channels and to kind of share that knowledge. And um, when we're all so hungry and desperate for that human connection and, and you know, for that creativity and for that learning, that's been really cool, um, I think, for those of us to kind of, you know, listen in and, and, and be curious, right? To kind of have the opportunity to hear conversations we might not normally hear or kind of jump into and research things that maybe wouldn't have normally been brought to our attention because of how much access there is right now. Um, and, and that's exactly what we're trying to do right now, right? To tell yep. people about it. Um, it's crazy because, you know, this, this current pandemic has been so overwhelming for us all in very different ways. Um, you know, we're all navigating it in the very unique roles that we hold as friends, as partners, as parents, as children, as employees, as employers, you know, all of these roles. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of pressure to, to do it all and to be everything and to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that for me, that kind of ties back to this idea when people talk to me about sustainability, they say, oh, well, I can't be zero waste. I can't be minimalist. I can't, you know, buy everything secondhand. I just can't do it all. So there's this kind of, um, this overwhelming defeat before they even get started, right? And I know that for you, you see that from the brand side, you know, from brands who say, well, we've already gotten this far. We've been in business this many years. We can't overhaul our entire supply chain. You know, we're not sure how to do it we're afraid to be too transparent about what we're doing because then we'll get attacked. Um, and we talked about this, right, in our mm -hmm. first interview. And so I would like to hear from you, you know, this idea of, you know, starting somewhere, which is more relevant than ever, right? And, and what does that mean from your perspective? And how could that apply to people who are using this time to be curious and learn more about sustainable fashion? Sure. Um... Uh, the genesis of Start Somewhere is such an interesting um, journey for me, but um, and trying to come up with something to call this um, happened with a group of, uh, I think just five of us at that time um, on a brainstorming meeting, trying to call this something mm -hmm. <laughs> because I found it ha knowing that we could not be, um, we make lingerie and swimwear first and foremost, and that's made with lycra and lycra is the hardest fiber on the planet, but most of us want swimwear and underwear to have lycra. Mm -hmm. So it was like, how do I do this? And I knew a dozen fabulous things I could do that would be better for the environment, um, but they were never going to be pure. Mm -hmm. So it, this idea that um, my analogy has always been that um, just because you turning your own light off when you leave your house, your room, your apartment, wherever you live, isn't going to change the world, it still doesn't mean that you don't turn it off. Like, it's just, and I wanted to, 
I really wanted to ignite people and turn people on to uh, embrace that idea that turning your own light switch off does matter. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and it's also um, contagious. <laughs> mm-hmm. So those good things can be contagious if people keep coming together to do them. And it's, we do it in every facet of the business, but start somewhere as a word and a phrase really came from let's, Let's start somewhere to do meatless Mondays. Let's start somewhere to mix lycra with corn as a fire. Let's like, let's just start somewhere and let us go on the journey and then see how that affects us and how every time we do something, we could get slightly better. And even if we can't every time, we're still making forward progress. So that was the idea of Start Somewhere. And I wanted to sell that idea to people to ignite their passion around it. And I didn't want to turn people off with this idea that because you're not perfect, because Mm -hmm. I allowed myself to turn off for at least a decade while this passion was burning in me Mm -hmm. because it was easier for me to say I'm not perfect. So therefore, I can't be, I can't go totally vegan. So I'm not even going to try meatless one day. Like it allowed me to shut down. And what I want people to do is turn on, get ignited by it Mm -hmm. and pat yourself, give yourself gratitude for doing something right. It's like, give yourself gratitude for doing your workout, give yourself gratitude for not eating meat on Monday and, and call it a day and move on, do a little bit more every day. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the, that's the spirit of start somewhere and hopefully it allows people to engage and not disengage and it allows community and collaboration and collectives of people to not judge each other on what they're not doing to praise each other for what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that idea too, because there's a lot of, you know, it, it ties back to how much pressure there is right now to, um, you know, t- to be more ethical, to be more eco-conscious, to be vegan or sustainable or whatever, and both as a consumer and as a brand, right? And the support that you just mentioned, you know, the kind of, you know, be proud of that one little step, you know, honor it, and then just keep going forward is so important, I think, because, you know, you and I have talked about this, how you know, a lot of people just don't start either because the pressure is too great and they're afraid once they say, oh, I'm, I'm going on a sustainable fashion journey that there's going to be this expectation of instant perfection and like instantly having all the answers and changing your life. And, you know, what we need to establish, um, you know, as a fashion industry and especially as people who are passionate about sustainable fashion is more of a culture where we applaud, um, you know, just taking that first step or even just, you know, starting to do the research. You know, I love to applaud curiosity, right? Because you you need to start asking questions and you need to start researching things and you need to start to kind of understand how it's all connected um, before you can make informed decisions, right? So even just showing curiosity and starting to ask questions is a big step, right? That a lot mm-hmm. of consumers don't take. Um, And I think there's so many parallels with what's going on, you know, with the pandemic and how it's affecting all of our lives and this kind of overwhelming feeling that, well, you know, this hopeless feeling that, well, what can I do and what difference can I make? You know, I'm just one person. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I I think that's what's, um, you know, I I talked a little part of this being a little bit more panic and super uncomfort. (laughs) and that we're just getting to some sort of new plateau. (laughs) Not that anybody has all the answers, but what I'm enjoying about this movement um, to the plateau, if you will, is that it's, we, we don't have all the answers and we are stronger as a group, even disconnected now, not in person. It's, um, there's a familiarity, there's a grouping, there's a listening that's happening, there's more people showing up, there's more engagement than there has been. And that again, just shows that the more curious you are about educating yourself in any facet of life, um, 
whether it be what you ingest and eat, what you put on your body, what skin care you use, how much sun you get. Like these are all things that affect your, your human existence, but being curious about that and curious about learning in this space where there's a different kind of time and education available to you um, is just the right time mm -hmm. to start to be curious and to believe that your you do make a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, unfortunately, the past 50 years of our existence and the industrial revolution, all this stuff that we've gone through in the fashion industry itself is we take the greatest pride on what we get, mm -hmm. um, whether it's money or a great item or, and if we could start being curious about getting the same um, fulfillment out of what we give, <laughs> because consumers are giving, you know, we're seven people on our, in our brand and we are going to barely hanging on. And we literally are cheering, sharing on our text charity, you know, every time we get a sale, like mm -hmm. it's like, you guys make a difference. Your choices are, are not only keeping people hopeful, they're also keeping businesses, homes, families alive. And Consumers, they need to take credit for that. You know, your choice matters. And that's, that's a big darn deal. And if five people choose ha today, that's a, that's a huge deal. And that affects who made our product, what fabrics we use, what fibers, it affects everything. So the more we can let people know that their choices matter, and it matters just as much what they are giving as what they're getting, and we start putting that um, filter on our own choices, um, what you're giving yourself, uh, then I, I think we can change the, the way we've been being fulfilled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, one thing that, that stood out to me about the point you just made is also the thought, you know, as consumers, we're like, well, again, what difference does my one purchase make or whatever? But, you know, when you're... <clears throat> When you're when you're taking a purchase that might be going to a large corporation that you know doesn't honor its garment makers you know that doesn't have ethical production that that isn't you know being transparent and open about their journey and you you take that purchase that you might have made with them and you shift it to you know purchasing from Ha or another sustainable fashion brand you're you're not only you know taking that money away from the unethical and, and kind of depleting, you know, um, you know, their ability to fuel that monster and, and, and giving it to the people who are trying, but you're also sending a message to these corporations as a consumer that I, you know, I'm decreasing my purchases with you. You're losing out on me as a customer. You're, you're not getting my money and I'm shifting it towards brands, you know, who are being ethical and doing the right thing. And, you know, one thing that we talk about at Remake that consumers don't realize is that they are even more powerful than these brands because yes. the brands rely on consumers to stay in business. And mm -hmm. if consumers don't like what the brands are doing and don't like the product and don't spend their money with them, you can put a brand out of business. You know, yes. they need your, they need your purchases and they need your support. So even though it seems very minimal, every time you, you know, you take your dollars away from contributing to the wrong thing and you put your dollars mm -hmm. and contribute to the right thing, you're growing a, 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 an ethical, transparent, you know, brand with integrity and you're depleting the resources and sending a message to that other brand that if you don't change your ways, you're going to lose our business. And, and that's where the power is. There's a lot mm -hmm. of, a lot of power in your purchase. You know, we say vote with your wallet and that's what it uh -huh. means. And I think just the, what's happening in the, in the whole world is your vote matters <laughs> you, uh, in general. Like that is, that is your inclusion in the environment and in the culture that we're living in right now. It is the most powerful voting with your vote or your dollar mm -hmm. is it's critical it's critical 
and you should, and one thing that I'm also hopeful about in this scenario, and I'm, it's affecting me definitely personally, but I hope that it's having the same effect on people is I'm researching even deeper where I'm spending my money, whether it's personally on my family or it's with our company. And, and that's when, again, the people and their purpose really matter to me, <laughs> really matter. Um, and my vote for their participation in my current short cash is, I'm spending more time thinking about that than I ever had before. And I was already kind of in the forefront thinking I was thinking about it, but now I'm really thinking about it. And that puts even more power um, into the companies that will prevail on the other side of this pandemic mm -hmm. um, and the, the people that they will have in their total family, their supply chain, et cetera, that will prevail um, is going to be the ones that the consumer votes on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost a tipping point where we can, we can make a heroic leap from what was to what could be just by a hashtag start somewhere mm -hmm. purchase from ethical brands mm -hmm. what's interesting too is that you know a lot of consumers don't realize to kind of <clears throat> tie the voting and the the you know your your purchase as a consumer back together a lot of the, these very large corporations um spend a lot a lot of money lobbying for um you know favorable conditions to mm -hmm. their continuing of their, you know, um, unethical, exploitive supply chains. And so, you know, what consumers also don't realize is that even if you think your one vote doesn't matter when you go to the polls and you cast a vote for a candidate, you're still voting with your wallet when you spend with these very large corporations because they spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year paying politicians to you know have favorable conditions for their mistreatment um you know to continue their supply chain so you're voting one way or the other you know whether you like it or not if you are engaging in you know a, an economy where you're purchasing goods you know from um other brands that money is going somewhere and so it really does have more of a multiplier effect I think, um, than people realize, um, you know, it, it's, it, it is so powerful to contribute to a smaller brand, um, that's doing the right thing. So I'm curious from you, you know, a lot of, a lot of brands are struggling as you guys are, you know, just, just, you know, monumentally through this crisis. And if, you know, if there are brands that are watching or, you know, consumers who work at brands that are, you know, kind of, realizing that you know the covid crisis has been a call to sustainability um you know not just in the fashion space but in every realm right we're seeing the impacts on the environment we're seeing impacts on healthcare we're seeing impacts on our society if brands are listening to this and realizing you know that and maybe this this has been their wake up call mm -hmm. um how would you speak to them from brand to brand about starting somewhere and, and what that means to kind of be looking at how their product and their supply chain and their employees are part of, you know, more of a global sustainability um, impact. Um, I, I would say to all of, um, all of the brands out there that it's, uh, it's a really um, good time. Take this time right now to really choose the partners you want to build the future with. Um, you have that unfortunate chance to have to minimize everything you're doing. You have to minimize the people that stay on your team. You have to minimize the supply chain, the amount of product you're making. Like, let this be the catalyst for you to choose the next stage right for you um, and and that is multi-tiered the easy part to discuss is people and your um, vendors but mm -hmm. 
the biggest impact we can all have, and this is going to be the hardest thing to do, especially for brands that aren't already in the space to start somewhere, but your product pipeline. We have to stop making so much product. It is inconceivable what we're doing to the planet. And this can be the moment where brands can stop. I, I'll use a not fashion example. Like we can stop serving so much food on a portion that's going to get thrown out. Just think of it like you're feeding people the last portion of food and you don't want any of it to get thrown out. Like we have that choice right now. If you start anywhere, my advice would be Choose your partners, and I think that's going to be easy and self-fulfilling, but have a checkpoint in your head that that partner is serving the same values as you in the long term that you want. And then second, really look at your product pipeline mm -hmm. and how can you reduce and improve and make less or make something so much better than someone else if you focused. Um, I think from brand to brand, I would, I would urge you to stay curious, start somewhere, do something every day, mm -hmm. um, and, and lean into these changes. Cause I think this could take, I know for, for Ha that we are able to leap probably three years over, um, what I had anticipated purely by focusing right now and not having all the noise. Like we lost our wholesale business for the most part, almost 90% of our wholesale business um, is shut down. And that was the noisiest part of my business because they all wanted something different. They wanted it at a different price. They, everything they wanted was different than my, my purpose. So mm -hmm. um, I would just, encourage you all start somewhere use this as the pivot point take advantage of it and downsize everything to quality versus quantity across everything people and products absolutely that's i love that idea because um i think it parallels so well with the current crisis that we're going through and a lot of us are being stripped down whether we've lost income and we simply can't afford the lifestyle and the consumption that we had mm -hmm. before or whether we're you know our life has been altered and we're realizing um that we just didn't need all of those things that we had been consuming before um i think there's been an awakening to to this gluttony of consumption you know the consumption of social media the consumption of food and alcohol the consumption of fashion you know and other consumer goods um, you know, and what a lot of people are talking about through this crisis is that they've been forced to look a little bit deeper at what the root cause of the need for all that consumption has been. And, you know, a lot of it, I think, um, is just kind of unconscious, you know, we just kind of go through the motions or we get used to doing things a certain way. Um, and then we don't question it. We don't stop and think about it. So, I like that parallel because, you know, that's what this crisis has forced a lot of us to do is to just like, you know, stop dead in our tracks and, and reevaluate and even question these motions that we were going through and be mm -hmm. like, wait a second, you know, do I really need all this? Um, you know, it's interesting because the fashion industry has, you know, kind of been caught up in this, this, you know, we call it a race to the bottom, this sort of downward cycle, cycle of increasing stuff for less and less of a cost, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the feedback that I hear from consumers when they're, they're talking about sustainable fashion is, oh, well, it's too expensive. I can't afford to, to, to purchase sustainable fashion. It's so expensive. It's just, uh, you know, that's not realistic, you know? And I had someone, you know, kind of give that to me the other day and, and we started on a conversation about, well, you know, what do you think is realistic to pay for a, a t-shirt, you know? And the woman said, you know, I don't see why a t-shirt should have to cost more than 10 or $15. And I said, you know, then I kind of broke it down and I'm like, okay, well the cotton was grown and somebody farmed it and then somebody picked it and then somebody cleaned it and then it was spun, you know, into yarn and then it was 
woven into textiles. And, you know, I said there was probably, you know, 50 people that touched your shirt before it got to you. So of $15, how much do all those people get? And she was kind of like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. So I would like for you to speak to, you know, because you're talking about the idea of consuming less which which is complementary to the idea of if I'm going to consume less, then I can kind of pool the resources that I might have divided up over consuming so many things and, and purchase, you know, more quality things. And that seems to be the position that, that your brand has taken and the message that you want to share. So how can brands who maybe are caught up in that massive amount of product, discounted prices, sell in volume kind of um, mentality and and how could they start to shift to to this idea of producing less at better quality? Mm -hmm. um, well, the bigger the brand, the hardest the harder the transition is going to be, um, but not impossible. Um, and I think that's the fortunate part of the ethical smaller brands right now and our capacity to maybe forge ahead and. Give, become the example mm -hmm. of how this can be done. But when I think of big brands and I think of start somewhere, take a piece of the pie if you're a huge brand and just do one thing. You know, my um, background, I worked at Guess and I also worked at Victoria's Secret for many years. So I'll use Victoria's Secret as an example because I was there over a decade. But just take one either category or a little sub brand and let that be the start somewhere, you know, like let just all your, all of your bras to make an example or all of the panties at Victoria's Secret or maybe all of pink, I don't know, but these are just examples. But mm -hmm. if you're a big brand with an enormous global portfolio, either start a new one that is F is, as best you can be ethical or transition an existing one and let that permeate the whole. It's uh, let that start to teach you a, how to do it, find the consumer that's interested, teach the consumer, and then let that affect the rest of your portfolio over time. And that is in that start somewhere. But to do that, you have to be super vulnerable <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because you have to talk to your consumer and tell them, yes, I, I'm a mess over here. <laughs> you know, and, or, and how, whatever your brand voice is, I'm, I'm, I'm working it out over here. But in the meantime, I'm doing this as right as I can. Mm -hmm. and, and be transparent and vulnerable consistently. And I, I think that's the that's going to be the only way to, to kind of merge the old and the new if you're a huge organization. And even if you're small and you already have an existing business without kind of these purposes laid in, I would say the same, take your best category or your smallest or take something of the whole and change that. It's, it's, so logical and it seems so you know it's a smart place to start and, and you see that the consumer fashion industry still hasn't gotten around to this idea of supporting brands for trying right there's still this pressure to to be so perfect and i think consumers um you know have have more power than they think you know going back to um, that theme in general of of supporting brands who are doing the right thing. What you know? What messages do you receive from consumers or from other brands that that have really shown you that you're on the right path and that you're doing the right thing and that you know really encourage you guys to keep going? Okay, so on a granular level, I love uh, reviews. Mm -hmm. I wake up to reviews um, every day since we started this brand from the consumer on our website, on their purchases. And it's been super fulfilling since the lockdown in the country. Mm -hmm. The reviews are getting longer and so much more engaging because I, the consumer has more time at home, but mm -hmm. we're talking about it in our meetings, but sharing, consumer sharing, like endorsing, even if it's, 
if it's poor feedback, I, I engage with people who have a bad experience or didn't live up to their fit or expectation, or they don't understand why I'm calling recycle polyester ethically correct because it's still polyester. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we have a lot of those conversations. So I think that for me, the engagement of the consumer, again, that's where I know I'm on the right track. I'm listening to them. Um, it helps me point myself in the future. And it also goes back to the power of the consumer. Mm -hmm. And not every brand authentically cares, but I know, I actually know that people who started brands in this space, they really do care. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't do this for any other reason. So that just goes back into that circularity of be curious, start somewhere, start learning about brands, engage with the brands, give them both good and bad feedback. <laughs> and the, and share. Then the next step is share your experience with your friends and your circle. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like that goes back to turn your own light off and it could be contagious. Then we, we gradually start to change consumer behavior. Um, and I think, you know, the food industry is, is ahead of fashion by at least 20 years, but Mm -hmm. The idea in the 70s and 80s of um, Whole Foods in Austin, Texas, they were like weird granola, nobody's like them, you know, and now you can, there's whole, there are basically organic aisles in Walmart, you know, for food and, and you can have incredible experiences at any level of um, vegan or whatever you want to be. But anyway, my point is that all happen because of consumer experiences um, and the sharing of those experiences and the power that we have on social media mm -hmm. to share that authentically. I love that you said that about consumers commenting, um, customers commenting because, um, and I'm so glad that you've given me that call to action because I'm a bit of a lazy consumer in that even when I love something, I, I don't typically use that as an avenue to show my support. But now that I'm thinking about it, I base so many of my consumer decisions based on the reviews and the, you know, that people have left on a product page or on a website or something like that. Um, and so it really does make a difference. And I, I love the idea that we keep going back to the power of the individual consumer and that we're highlighting all these different ways that are, you know, kind of smaller actions, um, but can can fuel and can multiply in so many ways, you know, thinking about, you know, as you were talking about that, I was thinking of an example where a positive review on your website on a product, me as, you know, a new consumer to your website, I might see that. And just because of that one review, I might be inspired to actually purchase and click and buy that. So I love that you've given me that call to action because, um, I made a pledge this year, you already know this, for no new clothes. And I have successfully not bought any new clothes this year except for from Hop. And I didn't leave a review. And now I'm gonna go back and do that yes. because, um, because that really is powerful. And I think it also goes back to this idea of starving, you know, the attention and the engagement from the brands um, as a consumer. And, and adding fuel to, you know, the engagement and, and the ethical, you know, thoughtful consumption, um, you know, and, and kind of drawing that, and, that and, action there, you know, as engagement and, does. And negative feedback is important too, or curious, you know, so I, I really encourage that and also want to call out that as a consumer, if the experience with the brand is still negative after your negative feedback, then you can, you, you mm -hmm. really can walk away from that brand. Um, and if the experience is positive, then you've learned something else. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other thing that I wanted to say is might not be the right time is that we're talking a little bit, a lot about small brands and big brands, but there's some really kick-ass great brands like mm -hmm. Patagonia who are enormous brands doing incredible things. And 
I would venture to guess the few times I've had any feedback from Patagonia that I've given to them, you get an answer. So it doesn't matter how big they are. That's no excuse for you not getting an answer from as a consumer. Mm -hmm. Like size, actually, you should have twice the service, twice as fast from a larger brand than you get from a smaller brand. Mm -hmm. We have one um, one of our ladies on the team who does all of the customer service, it's literally like a full-time job and people just adore her. Mm -hmm. um, and, but imagine if we had a, you know, a, mm -hmm. an endless amount of people answering your calls and taking care of your service. So it's just, again, back to the consumer is super powerful. And if we could, if you and I and our platforms and all the brands and media associated with this movement could all ignite people to start somewhere think of the magnitude mm -hmm. of that because it's it's easy it's easier to do something anything than to do nothing and go nowhere it's like so if, if that can be the power of our of our voices together um that's what I hope would start somewhere. And I think you bring up a good point, flipping the coin from the consumer and taking it back to the brand. If brands would spend more time listening to mm -hmm. consumers and engaging and actively asking questions about you know, what they value and what they wanna see more of, I think that brands kind of undervalue how you know, incredibly um, powerful that information could be in, in, in driving them forward and in asking the consumer, if we are gonna start somewhere and make one little change, you know, where would you like that to be? And allowing the consumer to play an active role in what choices the brand makes so that those consumers continue to stay engaged and follow along on the journey and can kind of, you know, use their voice to, to, you know, stick, stick with brands that are listening and, and heeding that call and showing the intent, you know, and trying. Um, we have just about 14 minutes left. So I want to jump to the Q and A to make sure I get to everybody. Um, there is a question from Liz. Thank you, Liz. Um, I'm going to paraphrase. She has that, she, she admits that she too has feelings of guilt about Lycra and is just curious in terms about, you know, products that are out there that are using Lycra more sustainably. And if there are, you know, recycled Lycras or cradle to cradle type Lycras in production. Um, and just kind of how to find more information about this in general. So I want you to answer that because I know you're an expert on it because it's <laughs> integral to your supply chain, but also in general, you know, just kind of uh, answering the question of how to better research, you know, the materials you use um, and, you know, the things that are in your clothing and, and how you can make more informed decisions about that. So uh, Lycra is a, it is complicated. Um, and uh, we as a brand have chosen comfort and consumer usability as one of our core purposes. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to break this. I, I really wanted the customer to be able to wear our things all the time that they're to make something look really precious that you could treat like denim. <laughs> so as a brand or a consumer, I'm going to stick with it as a brand, we honor the lifetime of the garment, the amount the consumer can wear it and the comfort is part of our hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. So we actually make a choice to use extra life Lycra or what I call best in class Lycra. So what that means is that we have the best retention. Um, so things like underwear will have a better retention. You can wash them once a week and put them back on, wear them every week, and it will fit on your body. Um, the color lasts. Um, uh, if you, in leggings and things like that, if you notice some of maybe your cheaper leggings that are that you've had for 10 or 15 years, they have these broken flecks coming up. They look like white flecks. That's generally um, either cheap spandex or lycra that breaks um, with usage, which is breaking in your water supply, it's going into the ocean, it's it's fading, you have like, you know, maybe you bought an H&M swimwear piece in college and it was black and then the, in three months it was gray and it had white things popping out of it. That's poor Lycra. 
So we choose to use best in class lycra that can that will not fade, will retain its color and will last on you. So and then we the next phase is we choose what we weave the lycra with with purpose. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So in our swimwear and our all natural lingerie, we weave that with this corn fiber. So it's complicated, the answer on Lycra. And the best you can do is look to brands willing to talk to you about it. Look to brands already doing something right in their supply chain and feel free to ask questions around it. Um, but stay curious because The whole cradle to cradle thing, there are ways, I've researched it and I'm anxious someday to bring this to life, that swim, we could take swimwear back from the consumer and then we could take it and melt it down. We just don't have, we're not big enough to handle that right now, but there are cradle to cradle ways to treat Lycra um, and we're all making steps towards that. But my best advice is ask. (laughs) research, be curious, um, and very inexpensive, and it uses Lycra, it's probably just spandex or a non-certified true Lycra. <laughs> well, that it's interesting, too, because it, it brings it back to something we were talking about earlier in the conversation. And first of all, I love that you guys sell the guppy bags on your website. <laughs> so for anybody that doesn't know what those are, um, I was introduced to them originally, uh, I think a couple of years ago via Patagonia. They started mm-hmm. selling them on their website. Um, but guppy bags are um, mesh-like bags that you can put your laundry in in the washing machine to keep those microplastics from leaching into the water supply, which ends up you know, in our mm-hmm. natural water streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans. Um, so research that if you haven't checked it out. Um, but the point you made brings it back to an earlier conversation point, which is even though you're buying Lycra in HA products, because you're buying quality Lycra and you're caring for it, you know, more gently, that one garment that you buy from HA is going to last so much longer. And, and, and though the Lycra has that footprint on it, Mm -hmm. the seven bathing suits that you need to buy from H and M to make up for the life of one HA bathing suit, and on all of that cheap lycra that's getting, you know, mm-hmm. broken, you know, how you talked about, and I know exactly mm-hmm. what you're talking about, how it, you know, breaks apart and flakes, goes straight into the water stream. And so, yes, lycra is not the perfect material, but if you're investing in quality products and you're caring for them and you're wearing them a long time, I mean, you know, we do a lot of research at Remake on how just extending the life of a garment by, you know, you know, once or twice it's, it's natural, you know, or average lifestyle, life cycle, I should say, um, drastically reduces its carbon Uh footprint. So, you know, that ties it back to the importance of consuming less and consuming better because you can still consume products that you know, might not be ideal, but the impact that that you're making as a consumer is drastically reduced simply by only consuming, you know, a few mm-hmm. of those products to get you through how much you would have needed of the much cheaper products that you just cycle through constantly. Yeah. Um, there is another question. I'm going to save Caroline's question for last. There's another question in terms of, um, the, you know, the mission of your brand and everything behind us. Oh, the, the, the attendee says they're excited to purchase a trust us box. Um, (laughs) and a question that she has is where is everything manufactured from your line and how are you able to get the manufacturers to understand your vision, to understand your values and your sustainability mission? So can you speak to kind of how you, you know, structure your supply chain and, and the partners that you choose to work with and how you make sure that all of your partners uphold your values. Sure. Um, so we manufacture globally. Um, I'm a huge believer in global manufacturing. I'm a huge believer in um, communities that specialize in making something. And that exists all over the world, whether you're growing tea and there's regions everywhere where things have become generationally specialized and they just do things amazing. Um, so 
I am also very fortunate because of the years I spent in um, an organization like Victoria's Secret is I knew hundreds of manufacturers and I have the privilege of working with what I consider best in class from what I've known. And um, they, uh, I'm with such incredible partners that they teach me <laughs> what's happening on their end of the supply chain because they care so deeply about their backyard. This is like, I feel like um, um, in general, we don't appreciate how important this is. That's their children, their backyards, their lives. Mm -hmm. They really care about how they're making things and how they treat their people if you're with the right facility. And we do our swimwear in Sri Lanka, who's leading the planet on green initiatives. Our factory is incredible. They recycle everything. They are incredible partners. Um, and they are stoked to work with us because we're small enough. A, we've known each other a long time, but we're small enough that I'll almost try anything if it's if it's a green initiative. And so then they don't have to talk to a bunch of different hierarchies to do it. So, and then lingerie is made, um, my first partner in um, lingerie is a woman owned facility in China that is incredible. And they've been making lingerie with lace for over 30 years. And it's like 95% women there. And it's an incredible culture. Um, so I'm very lucky. I, I have these relationships. I met them. I chose them and they chose me. Mm -hmm. And we have shared purpose. So when, I, when we talked earlier about if you use this downtime to restructure your company, mm -hmm. figure out what you want as a leader of a brand to stand for. And even if you're not the CEO or even in the highest echelon of the organization, Decide what you want from the brand you're working for <laughs> and push them to give it to you um, and pick your partners. Like if you work for somebody right now and you're questioning that, pick your next partner. Like we have to align all of us that have a new purpose, a purpose around people and planet it, together. And we have to take that and move it forward to create a new future. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that's very possible if we are all searching for that. Mm -hmm. I love too that this also, all these points, you know, drive back to being curious because being curious and diving deeper and asking more questions is so important as a consumer because so many things are, um, you know, we just make we just make leaps in judgment. There's this perception that made in China is cheap and unethical and exploitive. There's this, and that's not the case because mm -hmm. you do that, and a lot of you know a lot of brands work with excellent, reputable, ethical mm -hmm. factories in China. Um, and then there's this perception that made in the USA is ethical and clean and eco friendly, and that, unfortunately, more often than not could not be further from the truth, you know? So right. just because something is made in the USA or made in China or made wherever, um, doesn't really mean anything unless, you, unless you're digging deeper, unless you're asking more questions, unless you, you know, kind of know what to look for and, you know, understand who the partners are and what their intent is. Um, so I think that's a message that is very important for both mm -hmm consumers and brands, you know, to not just rule out, you know, doing business somewhere and not doing it somewhere else simply because of something that you might know, but to take the time to be curious, to ask the question, do the research and, and look for those partners, um, those individuals to partners who are worthy of your partnership and to who, you know, I think you brought up a great point, which is also that if you are a brand and you're starting somewhere, um, lean on the wisdom of others who have done this for a long time. I mean, your factory in China that's, you know, been producing lace for 30 years, um, they know a lot, you know, they've mm -hmm. seen the ebbs and flow of the industry. They see what, you know, other brands are doing. They're very, you know, 
knowledgeable about the craftsmanship and the you know the way that the lace is constructed and, and how it should go into garments so you know when you're starting your journey as a consumer and as a brand don't feel like you have to figure it all out you know really right. rely on the wisdom of people that are experts and that have done that before um i think that's a really important mm -hmm. um you know part of the journey too yes um okay we only have one minute so um <laughs> Caroline wants is dying to know where you're. I can't tell if it's a top or a dress or whatever. I'm sure obviously, ha, huh? but she wants to know where it's from. But maybe you could instead tell her which piece it is, or kind of direct her to find something similar. Because I know that it's it's all. It you is ha. Huh? It's brand new. Um, Ooh. It's, it's just went live on our website this week, and it's called Hidden Gem, and it's. It's really, it's a dress, so oh. <laughs> sorry, you can't see the whole thing, but um, you can find it on our website. It's called Hidden Gem. Um, it's completely machine washable, stretch, um, digital printed. It's reversible. It's got pockets. Um, anyway, wow. it's a brand new piece and check it out. <laughs> that's, that's the pockets, the reversible, the machine. That's like everything that you need. And that's what I love about your pieces. I'm, of course, wearing my... <laughs> body suit as well and yeah. you get, you just get so much out of these i love them so much um i'm going to take the last minute to thank everyone for being here most importantly you charlene thank you so much for sharing yeah, um, your message and your inspiration and you know i want everyone who's watching to know that you're welcome to be part of this family, to engage, to ask questions, wherever you are on your journey, we support you. Um, as Remake as an organization, as me personally, as Charlene personally, as Ha, as a brand. So, you know, please engage us and let us know how we can support you because that is what we're all about. Thank you for joining um, this virtual hangout. Remake has a lot of these planned um, so that we're, we are making the most use of this time and sharing this information. Mm -hmm. The next one that we have coming up, um, is not next week, but the week after. It's a rock the vote uh, panel, which is really exciting and ties back to what we were talking about, which is how important your vote is. And there's so many ways you can cast your vote um, as a citizen and as a consumer. So um, that will be um, the week after next. So please stay tuned to Remake to follow up on that. Um, Sam just put upcoming events in the chat. So please check on that. I wanna give you the exact um, date and time of the next one. It is Thursday the 28th at 12 p.m. Same time right now um, on Pacific Standard Time. So please join in for that. Um, it's going to be with Tanya Peck and Sadamir, um, and we're really excited for that. So thank you, Charlene. Thank you. Um, I'm so excited that everybody got to listen to you talk and hear your wisdom. I encourage everyone to do their research and to be curious about your brand and everything that Ha has done and is doing um, and to just, you know, stay tuned to see what you guys have next. So thank you all for being here. Thank you. Everybody stay safe, um, stay curious and stay engaged. Thanks guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.